Every day when we throw trash into the bin, very few of us think about where it will end up. Those garbage bags, if not properly treated, will eventually be buried underground, where they silently leak toxins into the environment, emit greenhouse gases, and persist for hundreds of years. But in many countries, waste is no longer a burden. It has become a resource. There, modern waste-to-energy plants have been built like giant machines, where trash is transformed into energy. In this video, we'll step inside one of these plants to see, step-by-step, step, how it operates and how something once considered worthless can become electricity powering an entire city. Each truck carries tons of municipal solid waste, a mix of leftover food, plastic, paper, wood, and fabric scraps. When the truck arrives, the entire load is dumped into a massive storage pit, 8 to 12 meters deep. This pit is completely sealed, equipped with a ventilation and deodorization system to minimize odor pollution in the surrounding environment. Above it, a giant robotic arm is programmed to operate continuously. This arm not only grabs waste to feed into the furnace, but also performs the mixing process. Even mixing is extremely important, because if the waste is too wet or too dry, the combustion process that follows will be affected. Too much moisture in the waste can lower the temperature of the combustion chamber and produce more toxic gases. Therefore, the mixing step helps stabilize the calorific value that is, the amount of energy that can be generated from each kilogram of waste, which typically ranges from six to 8,000 kilojoules. After being evenly mixed to balance moisture, tons of waste begin their journey into the heart of the plant, the combustion chamber. From a sealed feeding hopper, the waste quietly slides downward with no odor or smoke escaping into the air. Here, inside a mechanical grate system, similar to a massive steel conveyor, the waste moves slowly and passes through three key stages, drying, combustion, and leaving behind ash. The temperature in the combustion chamber is strictly controlled, ranging from several hundred to over 1,000 degrees Celsius, high enough to completely burn organic waste and destroy toxic substances like dioxins and furans. To sustain that flame, the plant doesn't need coal or oil. The waste itself, rich in carbon, fuels the fire. A network of sensors constantly monitors temperature, airflow, and combustion efficiency. If any irregularity occurs, the system will immediately intervene. Every passing minute, tons of waste burn steadily, and that invisible heat becomes the driving force for the next step, generating steam, powering a turbine, and producing electricity. From something once discarded, waste is now becoming energy for an entire city. From the outside, curved steel pipes wrap around the combustion chamber like blood vessels. That's where water is introduced to absorb the immense heat generated from burning waste. But the water doesn't simply boil, it's pushed to a state of superheated steam, reaching temperatures up to 450 degrees Celsius and pressures 40 times greater than the air we breathe. This steam is sent straight to the turbine, where every molecule releases its stored energy. It spins the turbine blades at speeds of up to 3,000 revolutions per minute, driving the shaft of the generator, where electricity is created, following the classical principle of electromagnetic induction by Michael Faraday, now executed with 21st century precision. To understand it more clearly, do you have a pressure cooker at home? If you do, notice the steam release valve on the lid. When the pot is hot enough, Steam escapes through that valve with intense force. Now imagine placing a small fan, essentially a turbine, right there. The force of the steam would make the turbine spin, and when it spins, it powers a generator, creating electricity. That's exactly how a waste-to-energy plant turns heat into power. But the journey of energy doesn't end there. After fulfilling its mission of turning the turbine, the steam is cooled down, condense back into water and return to the boiler. It all operates in a closed loop cycle where every drop is reused and every bit of energy is maximized. The electricity generated from burning waste is far from negligible. With each ton of waste, the plant can produce about 500 to 600 kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to power a household for nearly a month. 
Perhaps the most extraordinary thing isn't the steel, the machinery, or the temperature. It's this simple truth, waste, once discarded, is now lighting up the very city that produced it. A quiet, sustainable, and hopeful transformation. Burning waste, of course, produces smoke, and in that smoke are countless substances humans should never inhale, from fine dust, sulfur, and chlorine, to dioxins and heavy metals. But in this plant, not a single stream of gas is allowed to escape without going through rigorous treatment. But not all waste burns completely. After incineration, about 20 to 30% of the original mass remains as bottom ash. This ash is cooled and sent through a separation system to extract metals like iron, aluminum, and steel for recycling. The remaining material, brick debris, sand, glass, can be crushed and reused for making eco bricks or road base. As for fly ash, the fine portion, rich in heavy metals, it is solidified with cement and safely buried in specialized landfills. All of these processes, from combustion, gas treatment to ash management, are strictly monitored from a modern control center. Every parameter, temperature, pressure, emissions, efficiency, is tracked in real time. If anything deviates, the system responds automatically or activates emergency protocols. Some advanced plants even display live emission data on screens right at the entrance for everyone to see. Because modern technology isn't just about treating waste, it's also about building public trust. From a seemingly useless bag of trash, through a series of tightly controlled processes, advanced technologies, and complex physical chemical principles, it has become the light in a home, the power behind an elevator, and the energy that sustains an entire neighborhood. A waste to energy plant is not an excuse for careless disposal, but a commitment if we must generate waste, we must also treat it responsibly. And the final step, though outside the production line, begins with each of us. Sorting, reducing, and rethinking our consumption habits. Because the journey from waste to electricity is also a journey from individual awareness to a global solution. Thank you for watching. Share your thoughts in the comments below and give us a like if you found this meaningful. See you in the next video.